In this mini tutorial, we're going to consider the idea of topical, topographical representation in the central nervous system, which at its simplest refers to the idea that there is a one to one correspondence between the outside physical world and the brain. So, to give you um, a trivial example, if we you know, think of a simple scene, maybe of some trees here, like this, here are some trees. A little forest we want to solve the problem of how the brain goes from seeing this scene of trees in a forest to representing them within itself okay so we want to get those trees that that image which lands on our retinas into the brain itself so we're asking the question how does the brain do that now in order to understand how the brain and the nervous system as a whole does this as I said we need to answer the question how do we get how do we establish a one-to-one -one correspondence between objects in the outside world and objects within the brain well we do that by having a third component in the system which is of course the body surface okay because remember that the image of the trees doesn't just directly enter the brain it has to go through the retina um, at some point in order to be processed by the brain so what we have is three stages to this process we have got the object in the outside world here we have got the um, part of the body that the image in this case is landing upon and interacting with the body wall and then we've got the brain itself okay so actually we need three stages to get this image here into our brain here and that is to first of all for the image the light rays coming off of the objects to interact with the retina and then for the retina itself to send this information to the brain so let's now think in a bit more detail about how this process happens and we're going to think about how this process works with a simpler example uh, from the somatosensory system. So let us just specify two parts of the body and we're going to think about the hand which I'll represent as an H and we're going to think about the foot which I'll represent as an F. Now the hand as you know like all parts of the body wall is supplied by sensory neurons which carry information into the central nervous system like this. Okay. Likewise, the foot is also supplied by a set of sensory neurons sending signals into the spinal cord. Now, we're going to consider more detail on the somatosensory system, so you don't need to worry about the specifics here. But essentially, what occurs is that the sensory information coming from the hand and the foot are relayed to the brain through three neurons, three individual neurons. Okay, so there's the second neuron. And there's the third neuron. Okay. Likewise, from the foot, sensory information from the foot is relayed to the brain in a chain of three individual neurons. Until ultimately, that sensory information makes its way to the sensory cortex. Okay. So this is the sensory cortex here, this wrinkled surface that I've drawn, and the sensory cortex has a number of different areas. One part of the sensory cortex is devoted to, sorry, devoted to the hand, and another part of the sensory cortex is devoted to the foot. And of course, in between, we've got parts of the cortex devoted to the rest of the upper limb, to the trunk, um, to the genitals, for example. Now, what you need to realize is that once again we have got a one-to-one -one correspondence here someone has touched your hand say those signals have gone into the central nervous system interacted with a specific set of neurons which have then activated a specific region of the sensory cortex likewise if you stimulate the skin of your foot those impulses are sent into the central nervous system along a different chain of neurons and they ultimately activate a different part of the sensory cortex. So this is what we mean when we're talking about you know, a one-to-one -one relationship between the body wall 
and in this case the somatosensory cortex okay so the cortex has devoted regions which which are devoted to processing information from different parts of the body now we can actually take the idea that we developed in the previous slide one step further so if we draw on a cartoon representation of the brain here in the middle okay once again we're focusing on the somatosensory cortex we can actually draw on a map um, of where the different body parts are represented within the sensory cortex okay so as it happens um, in the sensory cortex this region here is devoted to the lower limb um, this region here is devoted to the trunk this region here is devoted to the upper limb and this region here is devoted to the face. Okay. Now, if we draw on a representation of the body, we can show how the body itself is represented in the somatosensory cortex. So, you can see that the lower limb is represented in this region. The trunk is represented in this region, the upper limb is represented here, and the face is represented here. So we can see from this that the most superior parts of the body are represented by the most inferior parts of the sensory cortex. Likewise, the most inferior parts of the body are represented most superiorly. This works for the sensory system and also the same broad organisation is what we find in the motor system, okay? where the motor cortex driving muscles, say in the lower limb, is represented up here superiorly and medially, whereas the motor cortex driving muscles in the face is represented inferiorly and more laterally. So this was just meant to be a very brief introduction into the idea of a topographical representation. You can develop the ideas we've introduced here actually to the stages in between. So remember, or rather you will learn, that in getting information from the face to the brain, we have a whole series of pathways of sensory tracts. And actually when we look at the organisation of axons in these sensory tracts, what we discover is that those tracts themselves are topographically organised. And we'll encounter this again later on in the unit. OK, thank you.